Setting up your rain barrels. It's a simple task and I'll show you how to do it. That and a whole lot more coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. This program was funded by the following. At dollarseed.com, all of our seeds are only a dollar a pack. And we have online resources that teach you all about the rewarding hobby of growing your own plants, flowers, herbs, and vegetables. Imagine the joy you'll feel when your children actually help you harvest your first garden crop. Or the pride of knowing you'll never need a florist again. Visit dollarseed.com and grow a little magic of your own for just a dollar. Dollarseed.com, what could be healthier? Willow Spring Soap Company is a locally owned Colorado business just a stone's throw away from the Rocky Mountains. Their handmade soap is made from simple, recognizable ingredients, which lead to a more natural, earth-friendly, long-lasting, and hard bar with a wonderful creamy lather. They make soap using the cold kettle process with a specially formulated recipe of 100% vegetable oils. They use traditional methods that produce a true soap instead of the commercial synthetic alternatives that can dry out skin. Go to www.willowspringsoap.com to get a fresh and natural clean handmade in the Rockies. No matter where you live, you can compost year-round with the Worm Factory 360. It requires very little maintenance. As of 2010, the Worm Factory 360 is the only self-sorting worm composter made in the USA. Made with high-quality food-grade recyclable plastic with a 20-year limited warranty. For more information on how to purchase your own Worm Factory 360, visit www.lvworms.com. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener supports the following. Hunger Task Force believes that every person has the right to adequate food obtained with dignity. They're providing food for people in need. With their 151 acre working farm and fish hatchery in Franklin, Wisconsin, volunteers are needed daily. You could plant seeds in the greenhouse, ride the transplanter, or you can make an instant $10 donation from your mobile device by texting food to 52000. For more information on how you can help in hunger, visit HungerTaskForce.org. Welcome to Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. This show is dedicated to the average gardener, simple home living, and using what you already have. Well, today we're going to set up a rain barrels. Now, it's a very easy thing to do, and it doesn't cost a whole lot to do something like this. And if you're an urban gardener, you really don't want to use the water that comes out of your faucet from the municipality or water treatment plant because they add different chemicals that are not good for your plants. So you can get a hold of a rain barrel, 55 gallon drum is what we're using. Now you also could use a 32 gallon rubber trash can and there's plans online for that. But I like the, 32 ga or the 55 gallon uh, drum here. Now, if you're going to find one for free, you want to make sure it was used for a food grade material, not oil or any kind of toxin like that. So, to set up, if you purchase one, they are already pre-assembled for you. They already have the valves and everything in it. You'll have your on-off switch valve on the bottom. It's gravity fed. Uh, it's an, uh, this one here is a twist knob. Uh, our other barrel is an on-off switch. Either one works fine. And we, all rain barrels have to have an overflow valve, so whenever they fill to capacity, they don't uh, back up your gutter and damage that. And it's just a plastic hose that comes out the top, and you can run that uh, into your flower bed. So all we want to do is, you want to take your downspout and cut it to the proper height, and then you want to take a flexible uh, hose, a uh, flexible downspout, and attach it into the barrel and I'll show you how to do that. Now you can get barrels in all shapes, sizes and colors. Ours are white, there's blue and black and gray. You can paint them as well. Now ours have a buildup of algae in them and that doesn't bother me. Now online you can put a couple drops of bleach in the water. I don't recommend that, recommend that because that doesn't seem very organic to me. And also if algae is growing in your rain barrel, so one way to prevent that is to paint your rain barrels black 
to allow no light to get in it, but also if algae is growing in it, your water is healthy because algae grows in healthy water. So let me get this downspout disconnected and I'll show you the next steps in how to put the water, uh, the rain barrel together. So we remove the downspout. Uh, we've had it, we've used the rain barrel several years so we just gravity fit that in there, friction fit it. And we took our flexible pipe here, connected it to our downspout, took a piece of screen and zip tied it around the bottom so no large particles can fall down the downspout and into our water barrel. So now with this one, we're just going to tuck it in there and then we're going to tape the top in. On the other rain barrel, uh, we just take the flexible pipe and stick it right in the center there with a the screen on it and it, fr it fits nice and tight there. So this one we had to modify a little bit. Now you can have a multiple rain barrel system where you have four, five, six of these and that you can be as, as high or as, um, as high as you want them to be and you would take and put your overflow valve into uh, the next barrel down uh, on down the line until you have your overflow go out uh, after the very last one. So let's get this all put together and I've got the overflow wrapped around the back and it goes over into the flower bed and you could put this on blocks if you wanted to, we didn't. You just have a small portion of a hose or a long hose, however much you want, and it works real well. And we're going to get the other one hooked up, and we'll have a rain barrel set for the season. So we got our second rain barrel hooked up on the other corner of the house here. And it's the same way we hooked up the first one with the flexible pipe. We put the screen on and it actually friction fits in here. And on the, top, on the top, you want it to be closed so you don't have no insects, or especially mosquitoes getting in there and laying their eggs. So you always want to have that sealed off. And we've got our hose and we actually have this one set up on uh, blocks and it's gravity fed. So we have 100 gallons plus here, about 105 gallons here at the garden that we use uh, rain barrel storage. But we also have another accessory that we use to store even more water. So let's take a look at that right now. Another thing we have is this box that was found for us and we store water in these kitty litter jugs. Now we have the two gallons and we actually have the three gallon jugs here. So whenever the uh, rain barrels get full, we'll take and fill these up as well to actually get another 25 gallons of storage of water at the garden. And, uh, 25 gallons may not send a whole lot, but when it's a dry spell, every gallon counts. When planting your spinach, you can do it in a row or in a patch. We're just going to do ours in a row here with our little seed uh, planter here, just under the soil. And it's a cool weather plant. And you can also plant this in the shade like we are to get a little longer life when it's warm outside. Then we're also going to plant some leaf lettuce. Now, we're going to take a tip from Thomas Jefferson. When he planted his lettuce in Monticello, he did a thimbleful every Monday morning, and that sustained his salad or his uh, lettuce crop throughout the season. Well, you may not have a thimble, but you have a plastic spoon, and that'll work just the same. And we're planting many varieties of lettuce here, but you just take it and we'll just sprinkle it in a row. Now, lettuce is the same way you can. Uh, put it in a row or you can put it in a patch either one either way is fine just re a little side note a little lettuce planted goes a long way a lot of spinach planted goes a little way so it's just a variation to what you want uh, a lot of if you want a lot of spinach plant a lot uh, plant more than what you think if you want a lot of lettuce plant less than what you think because it's a heavy producing crop so let me get the other lettuce planted here and I'll show you a tip on how to make it cooler longer in the soil. One of the ways you can cover your seed by not putting too much soil on it is just use the back of a small handheld rake. This is actually a leaf rake that was busted that I converted into a hand rake. Because with leaf lettuce seeds and also spinach seeds, you just want a little soil on top of the seeds. Now, with it being mildly, mildly warm here this time of year, we're about probably 25 to 30 plus degrees above normal temperatures. One way 
you can get your crop to stay cooler longer is simply by mulching it. We're going to take some of the straw that we had on our garlic and we're just going to lightly place it over top of our spinach and lettuce. Now by doing this, this does a couple of things. One, it, re it keeps the moisture in the soil. Two, it keeps the weeds out from coming up. But three, it also keeps the soil anywhere from three to five degrees cooler under the straw than it would be without the straw. So when, if you're in a very mild climate where it's extremely warm and you're trying to grow some cool weather plants, mulch and it will actually benefit you by keeping them from bolting uh, longer. Now what we'll do is we'll just cover these up real nice, just a little layer, because I want to be able to have the lettuce and spinach come through this. And then we'll just water it in to compact the straw so it doesn't blow away. And it's a simple way of growing lettuce in a warmer time of year. A soda bottle bucket is an easy uh, craft to create and you don't have to use it in the garden. You can use it in the house for whatever you need to carry items. So all you really need is either a two liter soda bottle or a three liter soda bottle. And you're going to need two of them because you need one for the actual bucket or carrying uh, the container and then you'll need one for the, the handle. And all this is stuff you can get out of your recycling bin. So we're going to take one soda bottle and we're going to cut the top off to get the handle. So you just want to take your knife. It doesn't have to be super straight or perfect here. You also want a pair of scissors too. Okay. All right, got that. Now the handle can uh, be as wide or as thin as you want it to be. So I'm just going to cut, cut it that wide. So here's kind of where you want to get creative and make this a little. Right there. Okay. So you're going to take, as we've made here, you're going to have to make, figure out how big a loop is. So you're going to at least cut the ring in half. And as you can see, you can, a uh, two liter bottle is just about as big of a handle as you want. Now, whenever you put it inside of your container, you're going to want slit. So let's cut the top off of this bo a bottle as well, so we can get inside and get our slits cut for our handle. And these are really good for uh, children, too, to have their own carrying uh, container when they're harvesting in the garden as well. Okay, so we'll take our marker and we'll mark where we want our handles to be. Let's put one there and there. Now, as you see here with the handle I've made here, uh, you want to put a little uh, arch and notches on the side so it locks inside of the soda bottle itself. Now the best way to do that is on your container bottle, take a slit with a knife and just make a slit up and down and then we're going to take the scissors and make a slit crossways. You don't want it to be too big because you don't want your handle to come out of your soda bottle. Just a little cut there. We've got that you can see there's a little place where the handle can fit in so for a handle we're going to take and you want to just draw or you can freehand this a little kind of an ideal almost looks like a mushroom really so we will i'm going to put them together so you make one cut and you get both sides identical Cut that. And this is good for kids to do, but if you're going to have your children do this, you'd want to supervise them with all the cutting and notching of the plastic. So we're going to get that. And make that arch cut. And make it a little smaller. Okay. So with that being done, you take your little handle or your, your handle tip, roll it together, and then you'll just punch it into the soda bottle where you want it. And as you can see, that, that's going to open up in there and lock itself in. 
And we'll do the same thing with the bottom. Roll the tip of the handle, push it in, and then it'll expand back out. And there you have your own carrying soda bottle bucket. And this is real good if you're gonna work in the garden, you can roll this up on your arm as you're picking beans or picking the pole beans, wherever, and it's all, you got two free hands and you got a place to put your produce. And there's multiple endless items that you can use this for. So pull out those soda bottles from your recycling bin and start making some soda bottle buckets with handles. When it comes to gardening, if you have a 40 acre field where your garden is and it's 100% sunlight all day long, you don't have to worry about what climate your garden is setting in. But for most of us urban gardeners, we have multiple climates in our garden. What does that mean? Well, there's multiple areas that different plants will thrive in than other areas. On the back side of our garden here, behind the garage and the shed, it's partial shade most of the afternoon. In this morning, it gets between three and six hours of sunlight. So this is where we plant some of our cool weather plants, such as lettuce and spinach and Swiss chard. Now on the, over here on the, this end of the garden, it gets more sunlight than the, the shady part. This will get the warm sunlight in the morning, and then it'll also get the evening sun. But in the middle of the summer, when this tree puts on a lot of foliage, you have to be aware of what's around because it'll get May, it'll get really shady here during the sun, uh, summer afternoons, but it'll be warm sunlight in the morning. So when we have hot plants, plants that like hot weather that is, we'll plant them up on the far end of the garden where it gets extremely warm in the evening during the summer, and then plants love that. So you want to be aware of where your climate, what climate your garden is, and how many climates you may have. When it comes springtime and the first nice day there is, most of us will grab the shovel or the rototiller and jump in the garden and start going at it. Well, wait a minute before you do either one of those and take a walk through your garden to see what may have already came up that you don't know about. For example, right here we have dozens of parsnip plants that started to sprout because we had parsnips that we let go to seed last year. Now we'll leave quite a few of these, but also we'll take some of them out. Over here we have some leaf lettuce that came up that the plants naturally seeded from last year. Uh, we're either gonna leave those or move them, transplant them over to the area where we're planting lettuce this year. The turnips here we had planted last fall. They didn't come up all the way and they did now. You could eat that. It may be a little woody or you can leave the plant alone and it'll produce seed and you can try a seed, sa seed saving project there. Last summer we had a, got a great deal at our local, home, uh, local garden center they had onion bulb sets, 600 of them for $3. Well, we went crazy and planted everywhere we could. They didn't come up, but they have now. So regardless of what the end result is, we're gonna leave as many onions that we see coming up as possible and just plant around them. Also, we have just a random radicchia plant that's came up right here and that we're going to let go and see what it will end up flourishing as and keep eating off of it as it grows. Over here, we have bok choy and giant kohlrabi. Now this giant kohlrabi has sat here all winter. We're just gonna yank it up. It's, not, it's no good to us. But the bok choy here is starting to put flowers on. And it'll start to produce seed and we'll save some of those seeds. So before you just start rototilling or flipping the soil over this spring, stop and take a walk through to see what you might be able to save. Well, that's all the time we have. Hope you enjoyed the show as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. And with a rain barrel, you can save money in your pocket by capturing the, the water from the sky, and it's healthier for your plants than the water you get out of your tap. And mulching your cool weather plants can extend the life of those and make the soil cooler. For all of us here at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener, I'm Joy Baird, encouraging you, take a child gardening and start growing some memories. This program was funded by the following. At dollarseed.com, all of our seeds are only a dollar a pack. And we have online resources that teach you all about the rewarding hobby of growing your own plants, flowers, herbs, and vegetables. 
Imagine the joy you'll feel when your children actually help you harvest your first garden crop. Or the pride of knowing you'll never need a florist again. Visit dollarseed.com and grow a little magic of your own for just a dollar. dollarseed.com. What could be healthier? Willow Spring Soap Company is a locally owned Colorado business just a stone's throw away from the Rocky Mountains. Their handmade soap is made from simple, recognizable ingredients, which lead to a more natural, earth-friendly, long-lasting, and hard bar with a wonderful creamy lather. They make soap using the cold kettle process with a specially formulated recipe of 100% vegetable oils. They use traditional methods that produce a true soap instead of the commercial synthetic alternatives that can dry out skin. Go to www.willowspringsoap.com to get a fresh and natural clean handmade in the Rockies. No matter where you live, you can compost year-round with the Worm Factory 360. It requires very little maintenance. As of 2010, the Worm Factory 360 is the only self-sorting worm composter made in the USA. Made with high-quality food-grade recyclable plastic with a 20-year limited warranty. For more information on how to purchase your own Worm Factory 360, visit www.lvworms.com. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener supports the following. Hunger Task Force believes that every person has the right to adequate food obtained with dignity. They're providing food for people in need. With their 151-acre working farm and fish hatchery in Franklin, Wisconsin, volunteers are needed daily. You could plant seeds in the greenhouse, ride the transplanter, or you can make an instant $10 donation from your mobile device by texting FOOD to 52000. For more information on how you can help in hunger, visit HungerTaskForce.org. The show never ends on our Facebook page. Keyword, Wisconsin Vegetable Gardeners. Like the page and continue the discussion there. You can now follow us on Twitter. See what we're up to and what we're doing at the garden. The address, the W-I Veg Gardener. G-A-R-D-E-N-R. -E you can email us at the wi veg at gmail.com with your questions, comments, or suggestions about the show. <laughs>